whenever people are allowed to make an exception uh, or create basically a large gap or risk point uh, to do a favor for someone, that's really where uh, the bad guys pounce. With ACH wire transfer fraud, most of the time it really starts with an account takeover or a business email attack. Uh, and because they're in there, it means they're watching the communication so they know when to pounce and they know when to strike on okay, it. Okay, okay. Uh, and that and makes so sense it's kind of like having someone, uh, so basically had someone phone tap. Yes, yeah, so literally it's they're inside the they're inside the network, but they're actually literally legitimately in someone's account. So it's technically they've just gotten in someone's account and so they can watch it from here, then they can inbound a request via email and it's 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 like they can watch both ends of the conversation. C correct. So they watch both ends of the conversation and then they hijack the communication stream in between. Uh, and in today's world, they do it without generally penetrating the network. Uh, and so traditionally we would say, okay, well, our network's protected, so they can't do that. But because the devices are outside of the building and usually email uh, is in the cloud, uh, although I'll say the cloud is t currently safer from these types of attacks than on-premises, which is a, a reverse of traditional uh, ideology. Uh, what we have to look at there is uh, the bad guy can sit there and watch. Uh, they can compromise the account and be in the account as the user. They can compromise the endpoint and just watch it without ever touching the account. Very popular is they get the credentials once, they go into the system, they set up a rule, and then they never touch the account again. That way no one ever really sees weird login patterns because they never ever touch the account again. They just rely on uh, basically uh, automated rules uh, within the uh, so email like account. In 365, they can auto set up an auto forward yep. rule. And essentially, if you, unless you're auditing that rule, uh, that could be uh, changed. And then the person, mm -hmm. technically, that's the lightest touch possible. He just has to make that rule change and he's out. And yep. then they, they touch it once and then never, never again. Uh, and we, we say it on 365, but 365 uh, and on-premise, as an example, both have the same exact risk. It's just that 365 makes it easier to find than the on-premise does because it actually has better auditing. People don't necessarily use it, but the better auditing is there in 365 than what exists on-prem. What percentage of the people that we audit find um, out of forward hasn't been audited? Put it in the, the 90 plus percent. Uh, and then the, the ones that are auditing it, often what we're relying on there is the automated processes within uh, the extended uh, E3.5 packages uh, from Microsoft. And unfortunately, you're only really getting things that an AI thinks are odd. Uh, and so sometimes that really misses the very low hanging fruit. Uh, and almost every ACH attack we've seen uh, one has come either from China or North Africa, uh, and two is very, very well done, very, very light touch to where they're not touching it often enough to, for it to really show up as weird. Uh, you know, they're in, they're out, and they're making yeah. sure they do absolutely no damage so that no alarms get triggered. So they're very careful to not hurt the mm. host. 